So lately, I've been seeing a lot of fear concerning the latest in Apple products. More specifically, their AR headset known as the Apple Vision Pro. I consider this fear rather overblown, so I've taken the liberty of pulling someone else's video so I can explain why I disagree with the concepts being presented. And my main gripe with AI is the way that it is quickly stripping humanity from basically everything it touches, specifically like music and art and poetry. So it starts off with some general comments on AI and it's stripping humanity from things. For her purposes, it frames the discussion of the video, but for my purposes, it will be framing the cultural context leading into this device being introduced. AI has gotten really good at images. I've heard it can do okay at music, but I haven't looked into that one. And of course, we have the language models, which is the one people find the most concerning because you are seeing a lot of job writing potentially be being automated. It is also paired with the Hollywood strategy, grabbing a lot of public awareness into it. And probably most interestingly, it's been heavily adopted into programming circles, including by myself, to make this crappy game draft. But cultural conduct isn't important to our discussion of the Apple Vision Pro because it is primarily a hardware leap, not a software one. This framing is completely irrelevant to the device. What framing like this does is it makes you associate this new thing with something that already bothers a lot of people, but the actual device should be judged on its own merits and detriments, and sometimes it's easy to overlook that if you're in, say, a fast-paced video. But until now, most of this tech had been contained on our phones and our laptops, but now the Apple Vision Pro has come out. All right, so here is the thesis more or less of this video. The headset is uncontaining the internet from our phones and computers. Now, I don't bring my phone to work or use it very consistently, but for 9% of people, they do. The phone is a constant companion and a useful tool, which is why I do not see how this puts us more on the grid than we already are. But when you present it as this is like fusing reality and, what, and technology, I think it's a bit more of a leap. But let's continue for more detail. And it also comes with a side of interpersonal relationship doom. She moves from this point into showing some footage of people wearing them in public, so I'll start with the obvious point. If you're having a proper conversation with someone, I can almost guarantee the culturally polite thing to do as these become more common is going to be to take off the headset. In these clips she's showing aren't in interpersonal situations. Like right here, this fellow on the bus. I'm not a bus man, but I'm not often in a public space where I start talking with strangers. It's normally just a matter of we're waiting till whatever we're in the space for is done. Like when was the last time you were in a line or a lobby and you had an interpersonal connection? This is a different context than if you say wearing in a conversation with family, which is what describing as an interpersonal connection kinda implies. But see Seeing it in the real world in videos like this, a lot of people online think that it is very dystopian. They are concerned about it for good reason. Matt Walsh tweeted on that video and he said our dystopian nightmare hellscape has arrived. Putting one of these damn things on your head is a sign that you have finally given up. So then they call it dystopian. And I want to be clear, this isn't a brain chip. It's a pair of expensive goggles that shows no observably more advanced activity than your phone. Dystopian makes me picture, say, a punk going into debt to get like implants into his body so he can keep up in the workplace. Dystopian pictures Ready Player One where the goggles are an escape from your awful po poverty. But these are rich people having a window in their face instead of in their pocket. This isn't dystopian at least not until we get into some more details here hey guys just want to show you what the TikTok experience is like on the apple vision pro i uh i'm able to uh consume as much TikTok content as i want at any given time that's literally my nightmare that is absolutely horrifying that alone is not good for somebody okay first off this guy's playing up the absurdity for the purposes of a comedic clip using it as legitimate as disingenuous and second off this is a picture of my actual computer system look more than one screen for max consume very new dystopian development and definitely not a mundane tool I use for things like editing out clips and writing a script at the same time. It's not normal! And I know that that makes me sound like a boomer. I'm not arguing it's normal, but this is being called dystopian and it doesn't seem that extreme. Here he is, on the subway. Tippity tap tap tap. Tapping away. Texting, answering emails, he has pictures pulled up. It's just, it, it is weird. Okay, now tell me if he had all these tabs open on a computer like what I showed earlier and was working in a chair at home, would you care? Heck, you probably do that yourself whenever you're putting together these scripts and videos. Which brings me to my ultimate conclusion about the Apple. This is a mobile computer desk. That's it. You can use it on the bus or if you carpool the passenger seat of a car, you can use it while you're waiting in the doctor's office. But it has, functionally, nothing more advanced than my desk does. It's a waste of money, sure. But there's 
there's nothing fancy happening here. And while you could theoretically, I guess, use it while walking, if I want to focus on something, I have to sit down so I can, you know, zone in. And if I want passive distraction, this will do nothing more advanced than a podcast already does. You might have like that screen there, but you're looking around. You're not actively focusing on the screen. And obviously there are people making the argument that, well, we already do that with our phones and our myriad of other devices that we wear and that we have. Saying it like that does not remove the argument. If you're walking with your phone, you do have to look up every once in a while to communicate and interact with the rest of the world or drive, etc. I once went into Walmart wearing wireless earbuds while listening to a Twitch stream. The entire process, I spoke to one person, and for that, I took off my earbuds like these people likely will whenever they're talking to people, so I could focus on the conversation. But there was no interacting with the world beyond grabbing groceries and the self-checkout. This is not more advanced than the constant screen I already have in my pocket. I do not believe it will make any significant difference. So there's no real reason to take it off. These aren't glasses. I guarantee a headset will get real uncomfortable within an hour. And once again, cultural invention will most likely include removing it for conversations, work, the same way we currently put away our cell phones when talking working, etc. And this isn't the only video or article I found about this where they're denouncing what is functionally a mobile desk with this strong and fiery language when it's a near neutral change. And something about it's just really been annoying me because I don't think this is an accurate depiction of this piece of technology. There's technology that's scary, don't get me wrong. There's there's the brain implants or whatever Elon Musk wants to do. There's whatever China's up to. But this set, this headset, they're just overhyping. Thank you for your time. Go watch something else.